but somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back inside episode three, Booty and the Beast. You went backwards. Yeah, I, you never let me start. Big episode. <laughs> Big episode. Biggest guest of our shortened history here on Booty and the Beast. Four-time Mr. Olympia. Jay Cutler. Friend of the family. <laughs> it's Definitely weird. Friend. You know, when I started this company back in 2016, Jesus, uh, I had no idea I'd be friends with Jay Cutler. Yeah, how cool do you feel right now? I mean, it was cool because it helped me get you. You're like, wait, you know Jay Cutler? And uh, a little story for people <laughs> listening and watching out there. It was Danielle's 26th birthday. And we had known each other for, I don't know, a little over a year, something mm-hmm. like that. Yep. And I liked this girl. And I I knew like how I could get in her good graces would be like, I can. how do I do this? So I sent a text to Jay. I said, Jay, there's this girl that I kind of dig. Can you like just record yourself saying happy birthday or something? So, I mean- he did. He did. And you posted it. I was pretty excited. Well, then, I can't then lie you about took, that. Then, then you like took credit though. I'm like, yeah, I know Jay Cutler. Like, I he, did not take credit of that. <laughs> if it's still on your Instagram, I urge people to go check your Instagram out. It's like, it is. Oh my it's God, posted. you know Jay Cutler. She doesn't. Everyone commented and I think it actually had the most likes I've ever had it on should. Instagram. <laughs> that is what your boy does. Hooking it up. Jay Cutler, four time Mr. Olympia. Joining us here in a little bit. And I, I just want to, like, we, we haven't talked to Jay yet, but- I think every podcast Jay's on, it's like, hey, who's going to win the Olympia this year? And what'd you think of the Arnold? And, and you know what? Like, Jay's got, like, a personal side of him. Oh, yeah. A personal That's side right. that I don't know very well. Yeah. I mean, let's dig in and see He's what else He's got a dog that dresses in, in <laughs> Louis Vuitton. I loved that dog when we went to the Olympia back when I was pregnant. Yeah, you I were. remember <laughs> going down to the lobby, and he just had this tiny little puppy in his arm everywhere he went. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like a service dog. <laughs> Super cute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I'm excited to, to, to get to know Jay more on a personal level, and I think you guys will be too, because there's there's only so much Jay can you know make predictions and talk about the art of bodybuilding and the craft and how to build this thick back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't change. You pick nope. shit up, you put shit down. You diet, you work hard. Definitely. Speaking of diet and working hard and picking shit up and putting shit down, we've been on a prep for a hot minute. Yeah, we have been. I guess I'm only four weeks in technically, and you're, what, five or six? Six. Because I had to take a break. Yep. Why is that? <laughs> Couldn't tell you. It's weird, right? If you're watching, look at this shit. Like this, this is like a bionic. I actually asked you for the first time yesterday, like, have you been having any pain? And See, your now, answer was, ladies and gentlemen, did you hear that? I asked you for the first time <laughs> in, in a while. In, in, in six a while, weeks, my wife decides That's to ask if I'm true. doing Come okay. On. No. Hey, honey, are you doing okay? okay well, so you could ask me just six to be weeks clear, ago. He would complain in the evenings. Well, I don't complain. Okay. Well, he would silently complain with his arm on a pillow sitting and watching TV. You're a former nurse. It's called rise. Rest, yeah. ice, compression, rice. elevation. Rice. Whatever. <laughs> Same <laughs> shit. Uh, but yeah, last night was the first time like in the evening that you said you didn't have pain. I haven't had pain in a shocking. long time. Yeah. I mean, if, uh, well, so let's, yeah, let's dive into this prep situation because we both mm-hmm. had different issues. My issue uh, stemming from uh um, bicep tear slash repair reattachment, mm-hmm. little setback, apparently not as big as people thought and I initially thought, and you had some issues as well that I think we should talk about. Yeah, definitely. Um, Danny couldn't poop. <laughs> Is that all right? I know. I, I did, it's just such a strange way of uh, having issues during this. But yeah, I was going through constipation, and obviously that meant having a ton of poop in my stomach. I wasn't losing weight, and it was very discouraging, but also... Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. I mean, if I don't poop in like 12 <laughs> hours, I feel like something's I was, wrong. I think my longest streak was five days. Yeah, you fucking told me it's normal for people to go like two days without pooping. It's not normal. You I know, don't there, are, you there are people. Everyone has a different normal. There, as a GI nurse, everyone has a different normal. There are people who will go two, three days without having a poop and be perfectly fine. I mean, that's fucked up. 
It's weird. It's really but weird. It's, but it's real. So we go to a Walmart and you're buying like <laughs> this elixir, clear magnesium oh fucking citrate, citrate, whatever. Oh my gosh. Two bottles of it. She downs half of it. Next thing you know, she's fucking puking. Oh, it was horrible. I So it's funny because being in GI, I know after you go three to four days, Miralax isn't working. They typically recommend you take a full bottle of Meg Citrate. I've given this recommendation multiple times. I took a half a bottle just to be safe because I've never taken it before. My stomach was cramping. I ended up throwing up and it was miserable all day. Like I had that terrible cramping, like gurgly feeling all day long. And I finally did go. But yeah, it was a a long week. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, and then you went to Scottsdale and I, I, you, you had a couple beverages. So like, mm-hmm. okay, we're on prep. Naughty, naughty, Danny. Like, how did you manage being away, not having your weight scale? Even though you brought it with you, I don't think you brought it to the restaurant. I mean, you, you let's, let's be real. You deviated from the plan, right? I did. So like, talk about that. I honestly am not one to typically do that, but it also was one of my good friend's bachelorette party. And I did not want to be that person that was going to be super strict and obviously it's one thing to completely deviate and have pizza and eat all that crappy food I did try to stick to you know chicken and like cleaner foods but at the same time I also didn't want to be that friend that took away from her weekend so there's a balance. Um, I, I, think definitely, I think I think we should preface this too by saying we're not prepping for a show. If it's I a- was doing a show, I would never, ever not stick to my plan 100%. But being that it's for a photo shoot and, you know, my friend is only going to get married once, hopefully. Mm. <laughs> mm. I mean, talking two people here talking to you that have been married twice. Yeah, so, I mean, hey, yeah. what the fuck do we know? Yeah, well, it's hopeful anyway. Yeah. But I did... I did my best and came back only two pounds up, and now I'm back at my lowest weight today. So All right, so like, I think a lot of people ask, like, okay, how do you? Is it okay to have a beverage? Is, is it, listen, I've been on prep four weeks. I've had two glasses of wine, maybe three, mm-hmm. because we bought a hundred dollar bottle of wine. I wasn't gonna <laughs> let the shit go to waste. And some big life events happened, like yeah. me switching from nursing, my only career I've ever had, over to our businesses. So we wanted to celebrate a little bit, but on my actual prep that I have for my bodybuilding show, I can honestly say I did not cheat. And not once I did not have a drink the entire 26 weeks prep or prep that I had. Yeah. So. I mean, listen, if you lose a show and you had a drink during prep, that drink didn't cause you to lose a show. All right. There's a lot more. It's going really, on really easy to get in your head to think. I should like, have had that so, beer. Though. Okay. Well then fucking don't, but it didn't <laughs> I cost you the I shouldn't have had show. it like that eight weeks ago. I should not have had that one extra, it's, you know, yeah. four grams of peanut butter. I mean, if you've, <laughs> you've seen the documentary on Ronnie Coleman, the dude, before he wins his first Olympia, eats, I believe, pizza and drinks vodka. The next day he's got the most epic pump in the history of bodybuilding, <laughs> wins the first Olympia, and that's it. It's not like a myth. It, it actually was real. So, yes, Danny cheated. Hey. Hey, it's the truth. Hey. Let's see what it is. So, and now here's, here's the, here's the great part. And by great part, I mean the tough part. You have another bachelorette party in like two weeks. We're going to Austin this. So we travel to Austin tomorrow. We fly to Austin for the week. Get back. She's got a bachelorette party in like bumfuck Iowa or something. I don't even know where it's at. Okaboji. Okaboji. And then we go to Nashville in three weeks. Uh, I have a bachelor party, which I already had told Danielle, I am not going to drink at it. And I won't. And then we're in Miami for the photo shoot. So it is like travel, 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 eating out of a Chipotle, weight scale with us. So we are going to be tested Mm -hmm. over the course of the next six weeks as we lead up to the photo shoot in Miami. We're staying in Miami Beach, going to be doing a shoot on the beach, and then a shoot at the gym. And then we're going to dive into a fucking bowl of guacamole, and we are going to dance the (laughs) night away. I'm so excited for guac. It's going to be great. A flight of guac. If you've never had... Where was that restaurant at? Do you well, remember? We'll, just text, we'll text the, the gorilla. Vanilla oh, gorilla, Drew, he'll tell the us. The best guac I've ever had in my entire life. She was also a little bit tipsy on the margaritas, though. Yeah, I do love margaritas. So, uh, <laughs> and I guess on my my side, right, I we talked about it earlier, I postponed it. Like, I mean, I sat around, and I kid you not, I went to the store, I bought a fucking pack of golden Oreos, and like two things of ice cream. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to be here for a hot minute. I'm just going to eat like an asshole, and then I'll just figure it out, you know, in due time. I think that was, what, two days? Yeah, he was pretty depressed for a good two days, and I'm he pigged out with I was, our three year old. With our three year old, I don't know if it was more depressed or more. How the fuck am I going to do my job? Because like I have to type and do stuff for FI, and then that's the income that pays for this fucking house. Yeah, so I, know. I was like, what am I going to do? So maybe that you know, 
obviously led to me being depressed, but I also knew I didn't have time to fucking be depressed. Mm-hmm. I had to figure this shit out. Uh, in and the typical Ryan way, sure. we pivoted. Well, and then I, you know, I texted the coach and I said, you know what, fuck it. Let, let's just do it. Um, got growth hormone, started using that like almost immediately. BPC 157, TB 500. And here we are five weeks post-surgery. I have my six week follow-up next week. I'm supposed to be on a one pound restriction. Fuck that. Um, I was pressing 35 yesterday and I feel great. Now I'm not stupid. I'm not going to fucking go and do 25 pound dumbbell curls. Cause that's putting direct tension on the, the, the tendon. And I just got literally screwed back into my fucking ulna. Mm, right. Nope. Right. Bone yep. this time. Or is it radius or ulna? One of the two, yeah. whatever. Titanium screw in it. Okay. Um, and I've only had, I think, since surgery, maybe one moment where I thought maybe I fucked something up, and that's when I threw something away in the garbage. Yeah. Remember, like, when I snapped quick? Nothing to do with lifting. I was very careful for a while. Like, I was, mm-hmm. every time I held a plate, it was my left hand, hand on the bottom, or I made you do it. Um, now it's just like, I can fucking do it myself. So, yep. we'll see. I mean, the, the one-pound restriction is, you know, allegedly supposed to go to five next week, I'll be at whatever I decide I want to be at. <laughs> and there are people who be like, why don't you listen to the doctor? Well, first off, like, yes, the doctors are always going to have recommendations. Danny was a nurse. Like, you have to recommend these things. But everybody is a little bit different. I recover faster than everybody because I'm on these things. Like, so, like, I become bionic, and it's, it's, it's great. I think growth hormone should be fucking prescribed to anybody who goes through like an orthopedic surgery at some point, because it, it is, I am walking, living fucking proof that it works. Yeah. Not to mention all the other benefits with growth hormone, like the anti-aging benefits, sleep quality, de- muscular development, recovery. It's not necessarily going to make you fucking massive, but it definitely helps you burn fat. Mm-hmm. And you know what it doesn't do? It's not like, it's not like an anabolic steroid where it's going to be like enlarging all your main organs that, you know, control your body. So mm-hmm. Uh, again, you'd want to like dose it appropriately. Uh, you don't want to be doing like fucking 10 IUs a day, which, um, I know some people do, uh, you know, I'm at three and a half, three, six, which is pretty, you know, whatever it's Pfizer. It's legit. It's, um, you know, not gray market stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm in a good place. I'm at a, at a low as you were at 135 this morning. 135. I was 195.6, which I believe is the lowest I've been on this prep. Um, I started at Two, I mean, I don't know if I started the prep, but, but my pre-op, I was 211 or 213? 211. 211. So, mm-hmm. I mean, if you do the math, that's 16, 17 pounds, something like that. So, I'm down quite a bit. Um, and six weeks out, we're going to just fucking go. Grind. Grind. Um, what are you looking forward to most in Austin? In Austin... Normally, I would say barbecue. Like, I want to fucking eat <laughs> barbecue. And maybe I will, but I'll just make sure it's, like, pulled chicken, like, the good stuff. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I love our gym in the basement. I'm excited to go to some commercial gyms again and actually be in the grind of it. Well, we're um, going to destination gyms. It's not like going to a fucking Lifetime Fitness. No, yeah, Right, like, exactly. we're going Los Campiones, mm-hmm. which a lot of people in Austin probably have no idea what that is. It's yeah, new. Not. It just opened, like, a couple months ago. Big Tech's. And then House of Gains. Like, these are just destination Mm -hmm. places to go. So, as much as I love the Iron Union, and I do, and we have another machine coming this week, which is just fucking ridiculous. Um, Going to destination gyms, like quads, bevs, whatever. Like, that's fun to me. Going to just, like, a crunch fitness in fucking Edison, New Jersey. I'm I'm good. Not that big a deal. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, No, that'll be good. We're we're meeting up with our buddy Robert Chinesky and his wife for dinner. That'll be fun. Um... Obviously going to Five Star Nutrition. So if you guys are ever, you know, listening out there, the Five Star's got 60 plus stores. They're a huge partner of ours at Fit Butters and we love them for it. They're going to stop in there and just shoot the shit. Uh, they also are the same location where defined brands are. So that's Anabolic Warfare, um, Protein Creations, or Nutra One. So a lot of cool stuff. So we'll be kind of like, uh, <laughs> we're double fisting. <laughs> Boom, we're double fisting Austin. Double fisting, yeah. Um, which is, which is um, something I'm not used to thank God used to doing, (laughs) um, which will be, which will be good. But, um, you know, that's in a few days. Uh, we can't not, this is the best opportunity for us. And hopefully people are still fucking listening and not skipping ahead to Jay and maybe they are, but we have a big, exciting launch next Tuesday. Yes, we do. For Fit Butters. We officially, uh, today. So tomorrow will be the official two year anniversary of the first nut butter that we've ever created in our entire fucking lives. Yeah. March 30th, 2020, vanilla, coconut, coconut cashew, almond with mm-hmm. primeable labs. Yep. That ends up great. being one of our first launches. It's no it's longer funny. around. It's funny. I like 
worked a 12 hour shift, came home and we made this nut butter at like what? Nine o'clock at night. Mm, yeah. It was, it was late. Yeah, and then I didn't go late. to bed. So, yep. and then the next week we had s'mores. We had all these different flavors, but we're launching frosted animal cookie, 10 a.m. Central time on April 4th. Our actual like first day of business is April 7th. Um, but you know what? Whatever. Right. We're, I remember mm-hmm. the, I remember the video we did about like national peanut butter and jelly day. Yeah. Like that's, that's, <laughs> that was our launch, uh, in our kitchen of a thousand square foot apartment. Two years later, here we are national distribution and vitamin shop. Um, we got Costco looking at us right now. We're working with walmart.com and Walmart. It is a fucking crazy ride. Insane. Insane ride. And I'm just glad I'm not in sports nutrition. I'm glad I'm in food. It's been fun. We have just say, you know, call a spade a spade. We have the best nut butter on the planet. Oh, the best. It's, I mean, you, you, people be like, oh, no, no, it's, it's the fucking best. And mm-hmm. if you say it's not, then you're, you're lying to yourself and to others. Yes. And I'll like, we'll even have Jay Cutler say on the podcast that we have the best nut butters ever made. So I hope so. Uh, so mark your calendars four four ten a.m. Fitbutters.com. Um, for those listening here is a little plug for you. You can use a promo code <gasps> informant to save 10%. I'm giving you like a fucking discount on my own brand through my discount code. Mm hmm. Because you're a great listening audience. So you're <laughs> welcome. Um, all right. Should we should we shut up? I mean, we don't have a flavor review this week. And we didn't ask Q&As this week for us. We asked Q&As for Jay. Uh, but this podcast really is kind of about him. He's kind of a big deal. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little bigger than us. Like physically? <laughs> I'm taller than him. That's a That's fact. That's true. I actually was surprised by that when I met him. Yeah. Yeah. Taller. Uh, if you liked what you heard here, hit that subscribe button if you're watching via YouTube, listening on iTunes, streaming via Spotify, Pandora, or however you get your podcast platforms. Write us a review, House of the Algorithm, fitnessinformant.com is the website, Fitness Informant, all the social media channels. For all things Fit Butters, obviously, fitbutters.com, at Fit Butters. Check us out on TikTok uh, and our OnlyFans page. I'm kidding. Oh my goodness. Yet. But maybe. Yet. Maybe. You say yet. Why not? <laughs> Nut butter porn. Let's go. Uh, you I, got, up, I no. got some ideas. Just no. For the last two decades, we have been the best kept secret of the supplement industry. We've kept our heads down and worked. We pioneered full label transparency and full therapeutic doses because we believe that truly hard work requires truly effective tools. Two decades is a long time to commit to one pursuit, but when you act with purpose and become centered in yourself, eventually you realize that you were born and bred for this. Things you once thought impossible, you now do every day. We don't like the easy way, it just doesn't feel right. We'll take the long, hard road over a shortcut any day. It takes longer, sure, but in the end, you know you earned it. And with the right team behind you, pushing yourself further than you've ever been will be just another afternoon doing what you love most. Adding my product is going to help you get to where you want to be. Five percenters is five percent of the people in the world that are willing to do whatever it takes to reach their goals. We're talking about business, success, education, willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes.
now and, and actually appreciate appreciate what you've done. And I think you're going to go through this. Every person will go through this as you tr- transition into life. You know, me being removed now over eight years from competition and mindset of that I am going to do another competition. Uh, I do do appreciate everything, just like the battles with Ronnie, you know, the battles with Dexter, Bill Heath. I mean, all these people, I appreciate more the people, the fans, but I appreciate what I was able to accomplish. I mean, sometimes I watch some of these old videos of me in the gym or on stage and I can, I can remember exactly the moment and what I was thinking. But at the same time, I'm like, wow, I actually did that. That's pretty cool. So I'm like a fan of like the accomplishments yeah. now on the outside thinking that I wasn't that person, if that makes any sense. It does. I mean, it's mm-hmm. to me, it's fascinating. Cause I think, correct me now, like when you were in the rat race and you were competing year after year, did you not take time to appreciate your accomplishments? It was, it was win the Olympia on the next year. It's just like, yes, it's just like in business now, like you're never satisfied. And that's, that's not the best thing. I mean, that's one thing I can tell you if you said, you know, you always, people always ask the question, what are, what are the best traits of yourself? Right. And, you know, obviously I'm dedicated, hardworking, committed, you know, loyal to what I do. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's that mindset that I grew up working on the farm and my family kind of pushed on me was like the day never, never ends. You know, the job is never done. We work for a family business. Like there was no time clock that said, okay, we work eight hours. Didn't exist. Uh, there was no child labor laws. I was working at 11 years old. I mean, doing concrete, and that really gave me the uh, the mindset and the the work ethic for bodybuilding. And I always say genetics, you know, are only limited with each person so much, but the work ethic could take you beyond what you ever imagined. And I think you yourself, and I watch what you do and listen. I'm not inside your life, but you didn't get to your point now successfully without hard work right. and like a lot of hours, um, sleepless nights. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's like you and Danny can attest to this too. She grew up on a farm. Yeah, definitely. I don't I know did. if it's just like uh, that farmer's mentality. And I, and I worked and grew up on a farm for a couple years of my life, but yeah, you're right, yeah. man. It's sun up to sundown and even post sundown. Definitely. I, I think but, everyone always asks me how like, you wake up early every day and how, I don't remember a day when I was growing up that we slept past like six. No. Like it was every single day up early, nonstop all day. Do you tell us? Yeah, that's how it was at my house. I mean, my dad, my dad, I always said he slept with one eye open. That was kind of a joke in my house. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, you you actually posted a couple months ago. I think you went back home, back to the farm, and you were posting it on Mm -hmm. Instagram. I told Daniel, I go, next time we get Jay on the podcast, I want to talk about this. Like we, you've talked about bodybuilding on a billion podcasts and we'll we'll touch on some mm-hmm. of that but like what was it like growing up for you i mean it, it looks it's from from what i know like you've had a pretty good childhood loving parents i mean it's so take us through that like the personal side of jay cutler yeah i mean listen i grew up in a large family i got three brothers three sisters i was the youngest of that of that crew and you know my my brothers and sisters there's a big age gap between my sister and i are a year apart and then there's like a 10 year span to mm. my other brothers and sisters and they're all a year apart. So my oldest brother's 62, okay. I'm 48. So, uh, for us, you know, my parents actually separated when I was four okay. and my mom moved to Florida. So my dad literally, we had seven kids living in a home and, <sighs> you know, and I've slept on bunk beds in the living room with my father, which is crazy because, you know, we only had like a three bedroom house or something. So, like we were kind of stacked up and, you know, we, you know, my dad was like, a, he was a farmer, collected John Deere tractors. Uh, you know, we lived in a really rural area that no one really leaves. And my brother started their concrete business at 11. So I actually went to work for them on school vacations, weekends after school, really because I, they were almost like my cha- my chaperones of like kind of, Hey, keep an eye on him. But to be honest, like at nine, 10 years old, Like we did whatever we wanted to do. There was no curfews or restrictions. Uh, But like I said, I started working at 11 and, uh, you know, I was involved in sports in high school, but I was limited because of the work schedule, but it really developed my body. And I can tell you, like my brother still has 60 cows. I don't know if you saw the videos, Mm -hmm. but 
he has like cat, cattle still. Uh, he does have pigs from time to time, chickens when the, when the, you know, there's a lot of wild animals there. So the foxes usually get into the chickens. Uh, but we've got, we had all, we had horses, never had goats, which is something that I always kind of, they were kind of a pain to raise, but, uh, we had, we had a huge pig farm, like very close to us. They had like literally 6,000 pigs up above us. Um, so it was kind of that kind of area where I grew up and, you know, I feel that I had a great living, uh, growing up and I was very, uh, you know, appreciative of that. But I also had to write guidance of like, hey, you have to work for what you do. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, how I kind of transitioned into bodybuilding. Is it safe to assume that your dad was kind of your hero? Um, yeah, but I'll tell you, I kind of hated my brothers and my brothers and my father when I was growing up because I watched all these other kids go out and do all these fun things. They were going mm -hmm. on vacation this summer. Uh, and then the weekends, I mean, our school vacations, everyone was out having a good time and you know, doing the things in high, remember we grew up in a, like a, like I said, a rural area. So like we, we had like parties in my sand pit and stuff like that, like later on, but like, I wasn't involved in a lot of the social aspects, which is another component of what made me great in the gym. And as you know, it's a very lonely place. I know you guys train together, you built the gym at your home, but like you have to put yourself in this, I always say a boxy lifestyle. And I used to bury myself in the gym once I started training. And it was kind of like I was used to that just because I was kind of an introvert, if that made sense. Mm -hmm. Although I was really popular, I just didn't enjoy the social atmosphere. And still to this day, I'm not a huge social person, uh, but I can put myself in a zone and I can just grind. And that's oh, yeah. one unique thing about me, why I'm always successful at what I put my mind to is just because of that, that I'm able to, to just block everything out and just have that tunnel vision. It's interesting because I think I was the same way, like a single mother, but I had to work, right? So I couldn't do sports and some of the fun things either because our weekends were spent visiting my brothers who were in our jail. And I think at the time, you know, I didn't understand it. But there's a, there comes a time in your life when you get older that you look back and be like, I get it. Like you appreciate all the things that your parents and people did for you, even though back then, like in your case, you want to go on spring break, you want to do these trips, but it developed and, and made you the champion that you are, you know, to this day. And, it, you know, I look at where you're at now. Obviously, you don't live on a farm. You live in Vegas. You have a nice house. Like, is it weird for your brothers and sisters to understand your way of life that you've accomplished? Or is it, you know, for them? I mean, because they're still entrenched back home. And, and I get that. We're both from small towns mm -hmm. and people don't leave. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, my brothers, they're all very, very proud of what I did. Even, you know, my father didn't understand that he came out here and you remember I was in involved in a lot of things and I was bodybuilding and I was, you know, under a, a bunch of endorsements and, you know, I was traveling every weekend, but I also got involved heavily in real estate. I was very successful. My dad came out and got involved in property shortly after I did in Las Vegas as he was retired at the time. Uh, but my brothers all came to the shows. They would all pile in a van. My nieces, nephews, they were in Dallas when I won my pro card in 96. They came to the Night of Champions when I won my first pro show in New York City. They came to all the Arnold Classic victories. Uh, they did not travel all the way to Vegas for the Olympia because I think Vegas was a little over their head. My, my brothers are like, uh, they're country people yeah. big time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? My brother bought his first pickup truck at 60 years old, new, wow. right? His yeah. first brand new truck. They're very, very frugal in that sense, even though they're super successful, but they love to be able to say, yeah, that's our brother that was able to get out of Sterling and, and become, you know, something that he dreamed of becoming. I mean, I'll be honest with you both. I mean, I never imagined I would be ever as successful you know, as a person, business wise, you know, financially, um, recognizable worldwide, like it's not something you plan to do. So anyone that says when they reach a level that, oh, I planned all this, it, it, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't believe it because I, like I told you, I just sat there and started this conversation. Like I sit and like, I appreciate what I did and say, wow, that's actually me. Um, so they, they, they look at it as, you know, Hey, that's our brother. He's successful, but they're probably living the exact life that they want to do. They all have children that are grown. They were all grandparents. Now, uh, that was never the thing for me. Like I was just, I wanted to be the best bodybuilder in the world. And 
I want to give back to what I do and I'm doing exactly what I want to do. And that's, you know, helping people change their perspective on how they look and how they feel and, you know, be able to walk somewhat in the shoes that I walked um, to be able to be where I am today. Yeah. And again, you mentioned earlier that it's been eight years, I think you said, right, since you last were on stage. You are as relevant today, if not more than you were back then because of the advent of social media and how people can be in Mm -hmm. touch with you. But how have you kept your personal stock level an all-time high? I mean, you obviously, people know you're a great ambassador for the sport. We talked before coming on this recording how many different events you're going to and appearances. But I would Mm -hmm. imagine, like, you are still the number one sought-after bodybuilder for appearances, at least who's not actively bodybuilding today. I can't imagine anybody bigger than you. Yeah, there's some guys. I mean, obviously, you know, you've got, you know, the classic and Bumstead's moving up now. I think he's become more... Mm -hmm like a social media, I look at Regan, who's now in Vegas, he's very popular. But you know, for recognizable faces like the Ronnie and Jay era was so, it was such a, a high point for bodybuilding, it's carried over and we both transitioned from magazines to, to, to uh, social media. And luckily, I surrounded myself with a younger generation, I had an assistant that was 19. As, as Instagram launched out, he really, he kind of started it for me and explained to me, hey, this is the way, the trend that it's going. And to this day, like I have, you know, a staff, they have a younger guy that handles my TikTok and, and helping me like transition and do things that are, that are trending, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like the work ethic is still there. The work ethic is still there. The relationships are there. But more importantly, like I appreciate my fan base more than you can ever imagine. So I still go on social media every single day. It's, it's, a, it's part of my, my job or part of my schedule for the day is to go on, like, and comment on certain people's ins- Like I try to give people love on there mm-hmm. and I try to stay mm-hmm. interactive, even though someone at 48, it's really hard for me to do sometimes. I'll be honest. And, you know, and like I mentioned, I put up a, a like an Instagram story post and I said, listen, it doesn't sometimes watching liking or commenting on people's like Instagram, it can change people's lives. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. really can. And it can motivate you. And I'm sure there's a time that I commented on something that you did. Um, or like, uh, like I know congratulations on all the success with the brand and everything like that. Like that means something, right? Mm-hmm. Especially yeah, coming definitely. like Jay Cutler actually paid attention to that because Listen, man, I'm still that on that level of everyone else. We all have a goal every day waking up. I still have problems in my life. And that's the thing that I want people to realize is just because we have a bigger platform doesn't mean that our lives are that much different. And I think that's what's made me stay relevant. Uh, I, I appreciate people more than ever. You know, I mean, financially, like I have a lot of thriving business, but there's nothing I really need to do at this point um, to chase, okay, what's the next project or whatever else. I'm doing things for fun now, and that makes it so much easier. You know, when you're passionate mm-hmm. about it, it just makes it fun. Right. And that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of where I find myself now. Yeah, a lot of your social media, I mean, you post a lot. Um, and, and I've noticed, like, you are starting to kind of expand a little bit more in sort of your private life. I mean, obviously you show your dog quite a bit and your, your relationship, mm-hmm. uh, for, for a while, I think you didn't do that, but now you're kind of opening up to it a little bit more and more. Like, is there a level for you to be like, all right, this is, I'm comfortable showing this much on like, you know, going out to eat with my, my better half and whatnot versus like strictly, this is Jay Cutler, the bodybuilding brand. Like how do you juggle between what you should and should not show? Yeah, I pretty much show everything. Yeah. You know, my life is like, go to the gym, you know, eat, um, you know, travel to events. I mean, I hate to say it, a lot of my social atmosphere is when you see me on the road, right? Doing a lot of these events because I live in Vegas. I don't go to nightclubs. Uh, I stopped doing that since, you know, I obviously got into a relationship. There's no, ne- that's not necessary. Uh, so the night, you know, I'm, I'm usually in bed, you know, usually in, in the house by 10 o'clock at night for sure. And, you know, I'm up at five in the morning, you know, you text me the other day and you're like, why are you up, dude? I was still up at two. Like <laughs> I, I wake up and I, I wake up and I do social media sometimes. That makes any sense. Like yep. I run all the social, even though I have help, like I have input, I'm still running all the social channels. So, uh, it, it's just, man, I, I don't know. It's just, there's no line really. I don't think, I mean, you know, you see my other business and I kind of put people in my, in my shops and whatever with the clothing brands. And I mean, the supplements are all shipped out of Pennsylvania. So I'm not in that warehouse on a daily, 
but I still post a lot about the products because, you know, I have a lot of new stuff that I'm always doing. So I want to keep people informed and, uh, you know, try to get the interaction and repost a lot of things that people tag me in. That's why I always tell people, repost me, tag me. Mm -hmm. Um, I always try to show some love in that sense, but you know, I just want to keep motivating people, man. That's what, that's why I post what I do. That's why I continue to post a lot of stories. Uh, I don't do as many hard posts as I would like to. A lot of, I don't want to come up. I have trouble coming up with the quotes, like, or what I'm going to put under a picture. I don't know if you guys have that Captions issue. Every day. Oh yeah. But, oh yeah. <laughs> like I don't want to, I don't want it to be like, I want to try to do something catchy. I just, you know, but I'm very, very basic. I always have short answers or short sentences and like, that's me. That's mm-hmm. Jay Cutler. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm not a man of many words unless I'm asked to speak on certain things. That's yeah. all. I know, you know, when Danny, she competed in stuff, and I know how people can get when they're in the mindset of stepping on stage, and you did it year after year. Was it difficult, or was it something you didn't even consider, like, in terms of, like, a relationship? Was it difficult for Jay Cutler to be in a relationship while you're competing, to find somebody that you could trust in and put time in because – your time was spent eating and in the gym and obviously now you're happy and you're in a relationship, but that's something that we don't talk a lot about is like the life as a bodybuilder trying to be a supporting boyfriend, husband, whatever it might be. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was lucky because I transitioned from normal, like as as a teenager and, you know, I had a relationship that I actually, I said, Hey, this is going to be my life. And you know, is this something you're on board with? And, uh, you know, my ex-wife, you know, was, was a great part of my success. You know, mm-hmm. without her, I couldn't have done it. I always give credit towards Carrie, you know, and, you know, that slowly dissolved as we got later into life. You know, the blessing was, is I won the Mr. Olympia, which was my dream, but the travel schedule and the demand mm-hmm. and, you know, she was coming to events with me left and right. And it's like, she kind of sat on the side and it, it, it got a little, you know, it, it just got to the point, is it ever going to stop? And I realized that I built something that probably not many had got to that level, right? And like I mentioned, I, you know, social media can become very taxing, right? Oh, yeah. So around that time, like we started to have just a li- we just kind of grew apart. There was no, there was no disagreements or there was no uh, instance where this is what happened and why we decided to separate. It was just listen, we were going, we we had grown apart. And, you know, when I dated and, and uh, it's really hard to date someone that isn't in the realm of what you're used to doing because it's such a selfish business mm-hmm. and your whole day. And like I said, and someone like me is very, very extreme with eat, sleep, train, not much else. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was traveling. You mentioned, you know, I'm booked for appearances. Like that's the thing with me. I was probably one of the most um, active traveling bodybuilders ever. And me and Ronnie, like we were booked up all the time and we took advantage of it. It was a lot of different cultures, a lot of international travel. And next thing you know, I mean, it was just hard. And and I eventually found Angie, who's, you know, now I'm engaged to. I met her in 2016 and uh, we've been able to, um, you know, obviously I'm on the other side now. I haven't competed since 13. So she understands she's in competition herself. She did a bikini show last year. She had competed Uh before. So she understands like, the eating needs to be a little on point. The training is important. Like my whole day, honest guys, is still working out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I, my, I look forward to training more than I look forward to anything else. And that's just, it's going to be in my blood till, till the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but she gets it and it works and you just need to find, you know, what I call the small mate, right? You guys yeah. are small mates. <laughs> And, uh, obviously you have a child in the mix too, which is, you know, it takes time, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of balance. And I see you guys train it. You train together, which I think is really cool. I mean, at all opportunities, I try to train with her because I feel like that is part of the relationship mm-hmm. and understanding to see. And, uh, you know, that's, it's just, it's, it's very, you got to find your niche with the person that you're near, you're most comfortable with in all situations. How important is date night in your house now? I mean, you're still traveling a lot. So, I mean, and I'm, I'm assuming she's not going, she's not going with you to every show. Um, some. Some. There's no, we, we, we always have these days where we say, oh, it's date night or whatever, as we're in date night. But <laughs> to be honest, every day is, is functionable for me. Like whether it's Monday, Wednesday, the, you know, we don't look at Friday and Saturday as like, oh, it's the weekend. Let's go out mm-hmm. yeah, because it's busier in Vegas. Every night is, is, is a celebration to me. So like, I'm pretty 
free and open any day because obviously I run business and, and, uh, if I'm home, it's, it's available to, to be able to spend time in the Vegas is the best place you've been here. There's a lot of places to, to eat out. I mean, that's what we do or see a movie or go to a show or there's people in town that we might spend some time with. Uh, but if you said, what's a night out? I mean, like I said, it's not necessarily, she worked in nightclubs for years. She worked in the day clubs for years. So that's not really our go-to at this point. Uh, but usually a nice dinner, you know, sometimes to film or catch a show or, you know, sometimes it's just sit on the couch, man. And just like, you know, I have a theater at home or I sit on my couch with the dogs and you guys know, I love my dogs and mm -hmm. you know, those dogs travel everywhere with me. Like when we go on our trip together, the dogs come with, yeah. you know, so it's, it's part of our life. No, I, I love it. I think it's great. We we said in the opening today when we met your dog at the Olympia, yeah. you know, Louis Vuitton collar. I mean, she dresses oh, yeah. better yeah, than yeah, you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you guys, you, yeah. you dress her up pretty good. Let's uh, let's just pivot for a sec here. We obviously we'd be doing a disservice if we didn't talk about bodybuilding. And so we're on prep right now, and we talked to our coach about this, is saying like, hey, you know, some of these issues that these younger athletes are having, and we've had a tough year again. I feel like we've had this conversation maybe you know over and over the past couple of years, and and he made a good point. He's like, well more people are competing in the sport today than they did, you know, 20, 30 years ago. So inevitably, more stuff is probably going to happen. But what do we do? Because these guys are young, right? We look at George and we look at, um, you know, the, the people, even John. John sh should still be here, right? We still want him here. But, like, what do we do as a culture, as a society, a bodybuilding society, to educate, help people be healthier? Does the IFBB need to start, doing things. I mean, what would you like to see if anything happened to make sure that these guys and girls are maintaining a, a higher level of, of health? I think, you know, I think this, this whole, uh, this whole scare we had the last year or two, I know it was a pandemic. Um, so a lot of people were trying to point fingers at, at why maybe this was the effect of, you know, the virus or mm -hmm. whatever else. Right. But, you know, for me, I, I've been open lately about, what I did to become Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is listen, there's always enhancement involved when yep. you get to that upper level, but the bill of health is super important. So nowadays we have a lot of people I know, especially in the industry have gone for checkups. They've done the, the CT scans, which, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes the blood work doesn't always tell what's going on, right? You can have mm -hmm. perfect blood, but you could have some, some plaque buildup or, something could be going on internally. So it's good to do, you know, obviously anyone should have their checkups. And I know a lot of people don't have health insurance. And that's the reason I think that a lot of people steer away from getting the checkups, especially bodybuilders. And also bodybuilders are like, oh, I'm healthy. I'm indestructible. You know, you have to, you have to be honest, but at the same time, you have to be aware and you have to teach people like, hey, this is your health. This is long term, right? And you need to play your cards right. And the problem with the internet and what you read a lot on social media is like some people are just brutally honest about what they do, but it's the wrong thing, right? So mm -hmm. I would look to more positive people that have great success and have, you know, so, like even myself that like admittedly had done all you could do in, in the sport of bodybuilding. But here I am on the other side and I sit here and I preach like this is what I do. And, and listen, I even when I put out my content, people still question, oh, is he lying? Is he not telling the truth? Um, but, you know, you've seen now the NPC is back down to you have to be at least 18 to compete, uh, which I think is, is kind of a, it's a little bit of a travesty a little bit because I think there's a lot of 16, 17 yeah. year olds that, that want to compete. I mean, we were, we were scared of performance enhancing at that age. I remember reading books, you know, from GNC when I was 16 and I started competing at 18. I met Chris Aceto six months in. I learned about nutrition. I think we have to you know, educate about the nutrition aspect and like what it really takes to build and that consistency in the gym. And I just mentioned to you like, hey, this is my upbringing and this is what, it, what made me successful is people don't want to put the time in. Like they don't want to put the time in, but you know, it, the, the transition takes so long. So I think educating and having people of, of my stature that are, you know, doing these kind of interviews and, and, you know, putting out this content, you know, follow the people that are idols to you, but give good information, mm -hmm. not the bad mm -hmm. stuff. Like we don't want to, we don't want to deal with the bad, 
you know, don't support that as much. Right. Um, try to steer them in the right direction. Um, but be careful with what you do and, and really, you know, just have a game plan. And it's not all chemically enhanced. Um, even the food can be dangerous. So, you know, with all these overeating, uh, you know, high fat, cheat meals and this and that. Like back in my era, man, we didn't have cheat meals for four months. <laughs> it was just mm-hmm. straight like preparation with, you know, we ate a little more carbs or a little less protein at certain points, but we never had the, you know, burgers and fries and pizzas and ice creams and all that stuff. So I just, I, I try to preach it the right way. And, and that's why I try to encourage people to follow my content and, and be a little more open about it today. No, you make good points. I mean, I know a lot of people are tossing around ideas of, of requiring, you know, like health checkups prior to competition or post-competition. I'm not opposed to it, but again, who's going to pay for it, right? Like mm-hmm. bodybuilders, <laughs> you don't make money in the sport, do you, Jay, unless you become top of the world. I mean, I mean, in reality, in today's world, um, I don't think the contracts are as big as they once were for sponsored athletes, right? So you're, you're losing income there. If you're not top, what, 10 in the world, it, 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 even like, can you make, a, can you make a living being a bodybuilder if you're not top five, 10 in the world? Depends on your lifestyle. You know, it depends on what you think is, a, is a living. And in the beginning, I just wanted to afford my chicken breast and afford my $500 a month apartment. And I drove a crappy car. You know, I mentioned running out of gas all the time. Gas was 99 cents a gallon. Can you imagine? <laughs> and, uh, you know, cell phones didn't exist. Uh, so my goal every day was to get to the gym and train. But I said, man, if I can just afford that, which affording it meant that, you know, I could, I remember I was making about 1600 a month. I was making 400 a week and I was on top of the world. Mm-hmm. Like I, that was like great for me in my, my early twenties. And, and, uh, you know, that slowly, you know, it became different when you become, you know, known and whatever else you just have this, this stigma about what you, what you need and what you don't need. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, you can make a living, especially with social media now. And I encourage everyone to create their own YouTube channels and, you know, and, and build a following, you know, you know, go to events, meet your, some of your idols and try to do collabs and that kind of sense. Like video content so amazing mm-hmm. now. Uh, so I think now, like, yes, the companies aren't going to pay you to sit in your couch and just, you know, take the products and advertise in books. You know, muscle tech was, you know, the biggest sponsor of all a lot of mm-hmm. athletes back in the day. And, that was the biggest, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, uh, I remember they'd show up with truckloads. I mean, my home was a GNC of muscle tech products oh, yeah. pretty much. I mean, mm-hmm. I had abundance and, uh, you know, those days are a few and far between now. So you kind of have to earn your way, but that means, you know, you have to come out of your shell a little bit more. So if you asked me back in that era, would I have been great on social media? Probably not because I didn't allow phones. I didn't allow certain things going on, but, uh, can you make a living? I think so. It just really depends on what their living is and where you live, Mm -hmm. like living in L.A. and having a three thousand dollar month apartment and, you know, having a car that you have to pay six bucks a gallon for gas. It's a little more difficult. Right. Uh, Which means you just got to work harder, man. So it's work ethic really is going to overcome a lot of things at this this point. Yeah. I mean, you make a good point. I'm not a professional bodybuilder. I make a living in the fitness industry. You know, so like you look at look at Guzman, for Christ's sakes. Right. Like he's not top 10 in the world and he has got a whole planet down in Houston. It's, it's impressive. It's very impressive what he's got down there. Uh, you have somehow, uh, took this stigma of bodybuilding dietary supplement brands and turned it on its head, turn it around. Like you're one of the few though. Let's just be honest here. There's not many pro bodybuilders who start a supplement line, uh, that actually are, you know, staying behind the formulations. It's more or less, let's let's put Mm -hmm. our name on something, a fancy label and hopefully people Mm -hmm. buy it. You are the, the first, in my opinion, to do that. And Cutler's Nutrition is doing extremely well. You have a uh, plethora of products coming out with V2s. So is this a, kind of an exciting time for you as you've been beta testing and kind of bringing all these new products to market, given, given the supply chain issues that you've probably been you know, trying to rip the door <laughs> off your house on because things probably have been getting delayed and delayed and delayed? Yeah, I mean, I've been fortunate because, uh, as you know, I, I, I always – rave about the team that I have and I have a supply chain person that, you know, has really done great in staying ahead. And granted, you know, we've all kind of gone through issues with ingredients and, you know, I've, I've had delays in product launches and, and I'm more direct, a direct business, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not a huge retail location brand. I'm not, I'm not in vitamin shops or GNCs or, 
you know, although I'd like to launch in military, that would be my goal as we come out of this whole times, because, you know, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of traveling. I do a lot with the USO and, and, uh, I would do that anyway. But, uh, as far as the products, like, you know, listen, formulas have changed. Obviously ingredients become more, uh, more beneficial at certain points. Um, I've always been more of the performance edge where, you know, I look for the best workout products, but now we've seen a trend towards the health products. And what I've noticed is it's not bodybuilders that are necessarily coming to me for advice or when I travel to these events, it's more weight loss people. And I've seen a transition like this was not mm-hmm. like this 10 years ago. And I have so many people that say to me, you know, you changed my life. I lost a hundred pounds, 200 pounds. I mean, I mentioned that, you know, I'm doing like a transformation challenge right now and the winner gets to fly to Vegas and, you know, be featured on YouTube and get to train and eat with me and everything else after six months of this transformation. And I have, I have like five or six people that are over 300, 350 pounds and they're looking to lose weight. So for me, uh, ideally like that's where that this, this trend has gone. So I'm looking at products for performance, but also lifestyle change, right? I'm not focused on like the hardcore, like, as you know, ingredients are really tough. You know, you want to make the ultimate product, right? But the problem is, is you price yourself out of the market Mm -hmm. because people can only budget so much for supplements. And the truth is, is like people are going to try different brands, but they love the community also. So what I'm trying to create is uh, more of my community to be interactive. I mean, I have the Jake, the Cutler Club, which is, you know, a community of people that kind of go back and forth. They do live feeds every two weeks on that. So I'm just trying to stay more interactive. And that's part of the whole traveling uh, campaign. And and being active on social media too, because it's motivating for people. But, you know, I've been successful. I mean, I'm blessed. You know, I have a a loyal, loyal fan base. I couldn't have done it without the fan base. I couldn't have done it without people in industry like yourself. Um, You know, I'm able to send you the products and, you know, you've given me love on there. Um, And, you know, I'm just trying to just give people the opportunity to be their best. Right. And that best comes with a lot of factors. Don't, don't think that it's supplements that make someone it's, the nutrition, the lifestyle, Mm -hmm. you know, the sleep patterns, the training, all that stuff. So I try to supply all that to my, to the base that follow me for the supplements. Um, You know, they, they will get a whole kind of like a whole, this is how you do it together. And that's what I love about it. Last question here as we wrap this up is the Olympia comes home in December, week before Christmas. Not sure how I feel about the timing, but I'm excited it's coming back to Vegas after the last two years being in Orlando. You're friends with Dan. You got you kind of maybe have an in on what's going on down there. Uh, obviously, we'll be there with our brand. I'll be there at Fitness Informant. Um, you excited about being back home in Vegas? Yeah, and I'm hoping that we can actually get this workout done. Me and you? Both? Yeah, I know, right? It's, I, was just, I was listening to you talk about this person flying and getting the train with you and eat with you. I'm like, God damn, I didn't even got to do any of that stuff yet. Like, come uh, on, man. At some point, we will I know, do it. every time you hit me now, you're here and I'm gone yeah. and like whatever. But we're going to get this workout in, man. Just stay injury free. That's the whole thing. I mean, I'm bionic. I'm good to go, man. I, <laughs> I'm recovering faster than I ever oh, thought man. I would. So that's yeah. good. But we can always do yeah, less. I know. I, I, I watch your stories. I love your insight on it. But yeah, listen, I'm excited about the Vegas uh, Olympia. It's going to be in December. Uh, it's the week before Christmas. Uh, little, little awkward timing for the Olympia, right? I mean, I'm a September, October guy normally, yeah. but. It worked out. At least it's not in Orlando this year, which, you know, people have their, their thoughts about that, too. Uh, but Vegas, man, it, it's going to be great to be back. Um, it's all back on the Strip. You know, it's it's right there at the uh, Planet Hollywood, and it's, the theater is awesome. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It uh, looks like mm-hmm. we're going to have a hell of a lineup. What I really like about being in December is the guys have a little more opportunity. You're seeing it building to be a massive show. I mean, we just went through the Arnold and Boston Pro and – Now, of course, we're looking forward to New York, Indy, all these shows, who's going to qualify. But, man, is is Big Rami going to retain this thing? Or is Brandon going to be able to win it back and make history like I did in 09? Um, Is Hadi Chupin going to surprise everyone and actually pull it off? Or is Nick Walker going to move up? Or is Hunter going to be the next, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think those guys are going to be front runners. And then can William Bonick actually solidify that he's the second best or win the the Mr. Olympia? I mean, he, he came back to form. Uh, but there's also some newcomers. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen. And, you know, I know Bumstead's going for number what he's going for four, I think. Yes. And uh, mm-hmm. that that competition in the classic, man, is is unbelievable. I was just in awe at the Arnold with these guys. I mean, 
you know, even Breon Ainsley, who was fourth in that show, looked amazing. And mm-hmm. for him to get fourth and being a former Olympia and, you know, this kid Urs from uh, yeah. Germany is unbelievable. Ramon looked insane. I mean, these guys, and, and of course, you know, you know, you got uh, all the greats that, that come into that division and, you know, that's, the posing is just amazing, and I'm just I'm floored by the, the conditioning of these guys. Terrence is taking posing to another level. It's Terrence ridiculous. is next level. He's the best poser in our whole industry. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy should be guest posing at every every contest out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I actually should hit him up and try to get him out to one of my contests sure. because he's he's incredible. He's very oh, yeah. good. It's fun. I feel like, I mean, I think uh, with Dan and Jake and that team started in Orlando, Right with the production, and they made it an, an entertainment event that's you know can't miss. Really, I mean, the Orleans it sucked. I mean, it was just not good. Like you know, right? It's it's an old chummy hotel. It had some. I mean, there's character there and a lot of memories and a lot of great moments there. But being back on the strip, being at Planet Hollywood with that production value, that stage, mm-hmm. they get it. Like they're doing all the right things to sell pay per views, to sell tickets. It was sold out last year. We'll be there this year. I'm sure you'll mm-hmm. be there handing out awards again, like you do every year with your Jays on. Um, <laughs> one of you know 300 pairs that you own in your closet, whatever it might be. Uh, but I'm I'm excited for it to be back in Vegas. Danny's never been to Vegas. Never been. So nope. this will be her first um, first opportunity at Sin City. But um, Nick Walker is one of the most interesting athletes that I obviously have been following, and I'm, I'm friends with Nick and. His mindset and just it's it's gonna be awesome. Him, Hunter, like you mentioned, Big Rami, um, Brandon is just a sweetheart of a person like you. Yeah. So it's like you mm-hmm. pull for these guys and you hope they do well. But you know, it's funny because you know we can look back and you say, well, this was the Ronnie J era. This was the Phil Kai era. We haven't had a yada yada era since since then. Uh, so for you to be part of like an era that people refer to the Phil the the sorry the Ronnie J era pretty cool mm-hmm. are we close to getting back to something like that are we in the rami something era i mean there is it what do we need to get to that spot i think i think hunter and nick are the ones to watch like these guys are the future you know if hotty was here it'd be a little more uh competitive on that side but like i see hunter and and nick as the young guns mm-hmm. and that could be the transition we see but you know, there's also like the Kuklos and Ian Vallier, yeah. all these people that could battle out um, that I would like to see. Uh, you know, and Sergio is a guy that I like. I would love to see up there because he's vocal. Uh, there's so many guys, and I'm sorry if I leave certain people out, but like there's just the show's building up to be great because there's a lot of even playing field. There's no one that's like yeah. that dominant, mm-hmm. right? I think, you know, Rami and Brandon have been for the last couple, but, you know, these guys, I mean, Rami's, He's cl- closing in on 40. I think Brandon's the same. So really, how much longer are these guys going to hang around and battle out those top spots? I mean, most of the time we try to get out when we're 40 years old. Not everyone's Dexter Jackson that can hang into <laughs> oh, the <yeah>. 50s. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's what, you know, we're ex- all excited. I mean, you have a personal relationship. And listen, the Olympia would never be as successful with people, without people like yourself that are hyping it. And being a part of it, you know, being a sponsor and, you know, setting up and being interactive with people. And and that's the key is the whole culture needs to come together to create this bigger awareness. And that's what's going to help these athletes get the notoriety, too. So, you know, we always appreciate the love from the supporting cast. And I know that you're a huge fan of bodybuilding. And and I I always appreciate, you know, what you what you've given back to our business. And I've watched you grow, man, from from you know basically nothing so i want to say congratulations on that and i'm i'm really fortunate that you always um want me to be part of that that uh transition and that's you know that's that's what i like to say to you well i appreciate that and i uh obviously greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day and just have your life you know obviously was talking to danny first like man, you're, jay color's my friend <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's weird to say, yeah. you know it's it's weird to say that you're not just a, a personality to me you're somebody i care about so uh when i get to vegas next time we're crushing legs we've already said we're gonna do legs we need to do legs uh i fully expect you to be crawling out and me to be staying tall um you know is that's that's the expectation <laughs> or maybe <laughs> i'm puking i'm not really sure but it'll happen it's gonna happen <laughs> no 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 we I, don't go that hard anymore, man. No. <laughs> like, we'll see. Maybe you can teach me a couple things to the younger generation and maybe uh, some of this bro science that Dude, maybe I'm not aware of. I'm, right? 30, I'm 35. I'm getting old, man. I'm getting up there. 
you're in your prime, man. They say 35 to 38 the prime. See, Danny, so to be prepared. He's in oh, his I'm, like. Oh, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you, my friend. I appreciate you guys. Enjoy.